Okay, everybody, so this week I thought we could do some GIMP stuff. And GIMP is the stuff that Miss Kathy has the art barn that looks like this. It's that thin plastic string, very slippery, kind of stretchy. It's good for making lanyards and stuff like this. Things that you'd put on your keychain. Um, I just got this book on Amazon. It was like five bucks. Look how thin it is. Kind of a rip off, but whatever. Anyway, so what I was doing in a previous video is I was going to start and show you guys how to do the butterfly stitch to start, but I realized that that's way harder than doing the box stitch actually. Um, and as I'm doing this video, you're going to see this is going to be hard to follow to watch me do this in the sun. Puffins. Um, it's going to be hard to follow this on a video, but if you go to our newsletter under GIMP on page, I believe it's 16, I think it's, I think it's called The Square Stitch. There's a huge PDF that I attach to our newsletter every week. It says GIMP Lanyards, and it takes you to a web, it opens on your web browser. I think on page 16 is where you can find how to start this. And sometimes it's good to have pictures like these ones. This is not the one you're actually, you know, th those are, it, it has diagrams like this. So that if, instead of having to pause this video and rewind and pause and rewind, it's it, sometimes it's easier if you get stuck on one particular part of the stitch to look at a diagram like this and it helps in a big way. But anyway, what you're going to want to do is you take two strings and I started with short ones. See, they're only this long. When you're practicing, start with short strings. The longer your string is, the longer your final product will be. In fact, stand by. Let's see. So... This is one I did a little bit earlier. I started working on it, and the strings I used for this were like the length of my arm. It's a bug bite, by the way, if you're wondering. And you can see I don't have that much tr string left to work with, and it's not very long. So if you want a long lanyard, you're going to want to cut yourself a longer string. But when this is your first time, if you've never done this before, use shorter strings. It's easier to work with this shorter string and shorter string. And if you make a mistake, you can always trash it and start another one. Um, I don't want to encourage wasting stuff, but one thing I've noted, and I won't harp on this too much, is a lot of campers will start a craft and then you get discouraged very easily when you make a mistake. That's okay. If it's your first time doing an art and craft or anything really, and when you're practicing any type of new hobby or activity, everything requires practice to get better. So if you're doing this and one of your stitches is off, is off in fact, you, can, you can't really see it, but I screwed this up in one place. Don't let that discourage you. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Just like if you're if you're doing something for the first time, just tell yourself this is just a trial run and like settle into the fact that this is probably not going to be perfect and that's fine. But anyway, what you want to do to start, you find the ends, make them meet because your string should be the same length. Put all the ends together and then find the middle of your strings right there. Now if you watch the hemp video, you saw that I put a crease in it so that I could remember where the middles are in case I forgot. GIMP doesn't really do that, and if you're, brought, you're probably not going to be super accurate with where the middles are. It's okay. Then what you want to do when you find the middles of both strings, you're going to make like a plus sign on your thumb like that. And one of your strings is going to be running the length of your thumb up and down, like my white one is. You can use any colors. It doesn't matter. Um, if this is your first time, I would suggest using two different colors so you can differentiate your strings. It's easier to know how to do the stitch. And in another video, once I show you how to start this, I'll show you how to finish the stitch. Um, and your other string should be on top of the one running up and down. So the lengthwise one, my white one, is underneath my pink one, which is going side to side. That's how yours should be too. I was going to, I was saying earlier, I was going to start this video by showing you guys how to do butterfly stitch because I thought it was easier, but then I was doing it and realized it's actually not easier. This is probably easier. Oh, Lord. What have I done? Oh, good. This one's harder to start. This, this part that I'm going to show you in this video is the hardest part, but once you've started it, it's very easy to continue. It's easier than the butterfly stitch. The butterfly stitch requires more dexterity with your fingertips. It's way easier to mess up. So anyway, okay, once you've got that, just like that, what you're going to do is on the other side, so this is the way you'll be looking at it when you're doing it. You're going to be looking down at your thumb. You want the ones that are going side to side, in my case the pink ones, you want to just lay them next to each other. Side to side, like that, okay? And you can do like that, or like that, doesn't matter. As long as they're not crossing one another, you just want them to be parallel to each other, so, right side by side. Then what you're gonna do, and this part is tricky, 
I'm trying not to make my video super long, so I'm trying to kind of rush through this so you guys aren't bored by the end of this thing. I know it's super thrilling content. Then what you're going to do, once this is side to side, this is the tricky part. You want to take, you, I'm going to start with the bottom one, actually, and I'm going to bring it onto this side of my thumb. You're going to go, you, when you're ever doing weaving, you always go over first, at least when you're doing the weaving of the box stitch. You take the other opposite color string over the first pink one, under the second pink one. And now take note of this. See how this white string that I just wove is to this side? That's because there are two ends to each string like I just showed you. I call this end that's coming out and it just keeps going, that's the open side of the pink string, and this is the closed side of the pink string. Take note of that, that's important. Same with the bottom here. This is the open side of the pink string over here, and this is the opposite side. There's, so here's a closed side for the top one, this is the closed side for the bottom one. When you're doing your weaving, so I purposely have this white string to this side, because when I weave, I want to go under the closed side. You don't want, I don't want to, I wouldn't want to take this white string and go over and under on this side, because you don't want to go under an open side. Then when you go to pull this tight, as you'll see when I finish, it'll all come undone. So make sure you're going under, that your string is on the side, and it's under the closed end of the string you're going under. So you'll see it again when I do this. I go, for this one, you see I'm going over, on the open side of the pink one and under, sorry, my hand's probably blocking the camera right now, under on the closed side of the bottom one. And that's all you have to do. That's how you start the box. Now this is the tricky part. Very carefully take your thumb out. It'll look like just a jumbled up mess. Hold all four ends and very slowly, slowly, let me hold it up to the camera so you can see it better. Slowly, slowly. Look, I'm already, I'm already screwing it up. There we go. Pull it tight, pull it tight, and it makes a little square, just like that, like a checkerboard. So you see, I have like a pink, a white, a white, a pink, just like a chessboard or a checkerboard. And that's what you want to see. When you pull it, and I, you, I almost just did it. If you're pulling it and your strings are a little jumbled up, doesn't work the first time, just try it again. Pull it slow. The key is in slow. I see a lot of kids, when they start the stitch and they and it just turns into a mess. So now, here's something to note. Um, where are my little... I should make sure I have all my stuff in front of me before I start filming these videos. Let me just show you how to do this. I was going to just mention it, but maybe I can just try one off. Okay. So I ordered a ton of string and it came with like hundreds of these little lanyard things. If you want to make this into a keychain, you can do it one of two ways. So you can see in the book that they put the lanyard right at the end of this. This is basically what I just did. This is the starting stitch right here. And as you go along, it gets longer and longer. So the first stitch is right here at the bottom. That's the first stitch. So what you can do, so you can see the part that looks like a checkerboard, that's the top. That's not where your keychain thing, your little loop goes. It's going to go, see this pink line that is right on the bottom? So what you can do, it's probably going to be so hard to do, I'm going to mess it up on the video, but you can always feed, let's see if I can do this without eating up 30 seconds of footage here. <gasps> okay, it's working. Hallelujah. Oh, wow, okay, that was easier than I thought. I did it now because usually what I do when I'm starting this, if I don't want it to be a lanyard, I will I tighten each stitch really tight. But if you want to make this into a keychain, if you have one of these at home, before you really, really make this thing tight, put this loop in first. Because once you make this tight, that bottom loop that I just put it through right there will get so tight that it'll be hard to get the key, the metal keychain piece through there. And if you force it, the metal can it can cut the this this rubber string or plastic string, excuse me. So once it's through, then, and this is how you tighten it, by the way, I slide my thumbs in between the opposite colors of string, and then once I have it like that, you just wiggle it up and down, up and down, up and down, and hold, your, when you wrap those two strings, grip them with your hands and hold them tight around your thumb, and your thumb should be pushing towards the knot, wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, and that'll make that thing real tight, so you can see. It's almost so tight that I've almost warped it. 
Like I've pulled it so tight that it's starting to wrap around the keychain. That might be a little excessive, but don't worry. If your first stitch looks like that, that's pretty normal because you're going to pull that first one so tight, it's going to bend it. It's going to warp the first stitch a little bit, but your other stitches after that will be more normal. And you can see this is the bottom of one I already started and you don't even, it's hard to tell, but you see the first one, it's like smushed under there. The very first pink bump at the top there looks a little smushed. That's how it's supposed to be. Better tight than loose, because you don't want, which you can kind of see here, if I hold it up really close, well, it actually doesn't look too bad, but you can see like in some parts of my stitching, it's like tighter, right here it's like a little cinched, up here it's a little looser. If you're doing a really good job, all your stitches will be exactly the same size, and your, your finished product will look uniform, meaning it'll be the same width all the way up and down, which makes for a prettier finished product, I think. And that's what box stitch looks like when you're done. I call it, I call it box. I think the, the newsletter link calls it square. But I call it box stitch because it looks like a box. So that's how you start that. And then in two more videos, I'll show you how to do box stitch like this. So you can see where the stitches have been. And then I'll show you how to do barrel stitch, which is the exact same stitch with just a slight variation. So instead of getting this cubed look, you get like a twisted barrel look, which is pretty cool. And then maybe if I can somehow figure out how to do the butterfly stitch in an easy way, I'll show you how to do that one. So that's how you start it. You can use a keychain here. You don't have to put the key link in, that's totally fine. You can also, if you really want to, when you're finished this thing, like this one, you could just take this, tie a knot around a keychain, but it's probably better to start it with that. So that's how you start it. And in another video, I will show you how to do more stitching. Thanks guys.